All right, so today's big idea is we're going to talk about Instagram. I'm going to write some notes here. Instagram, over 500 million users. Uh, it's the, one of the largest social networks um, behind Facebook and various Google properties. So it has surpassed Twitter and Pinterest and Google Plus and depending how they measure it this week or not LinkedIn as well LinkedIn I see their numbers all over the place of, of uh, enrollment I see it between 300 and 500 million on LinkedIn and that's a big range but I don't know how they count themselves Instagram has over 500 million users uh, thanks in part to the uh, that one's going to keep coming down the rest here. Mm -hmm. Thanks in part to the to their owner. Anyone know who uh, Instagram's owner is? Facebook. Facebook. So Facebook a few years ago paid a few billion dollars, not millions, billions, a few billion dollars. Facebook paid a few billion dollars a few years ago. They saw the value of this network pretty early on. Back when they had less than a hundred thousand, a hundred million, that is, a hundred million uh, users, Facebook thought this is going to be valuable for us, so we'll buy it. And they did for a few billion dollars. And now that has grown to over 500 million users. So it works this synergy of having the biggest social network with this other social network together. So Instagram is very innovative because the big idea of what you do on Instagram their big innovation is share photos well every network does that so it's not an innovation but what was originally the innovation I think all the networks unfortunately are getting a little boring they're all letting you share photos they're all letting you share videos they're all doing the same thing over and over but the original innovation Square photos with a fun filter. So these filters that I remember showing my dad Instagram a few years ago and I said, look at this cool photo I took. And he says, well, why does it look so weird? <laughs> the thing was because of the filter. This filter here can give it an effect of, you know, faded colors or, uh, you know, weird color shifts the photos looked weird and he said you know that that photo looks like if I had if I had my film developed at Walgreens and they sh showed me that photo I would have given it back I wouldn't <laughs> have taken it remember when we were shooting film and we uh, could preview all of the photos and then oh, I don't like this one I won't take it I don't like this one I don't like this one well maybe the camera overexposed your photo maybe it um, there was a light leak or whatever and we didn't want those photos in the old days. But now because of cell phones, we can take pretty good photos pretty easily and delete the ones that are not that good right away. Instagram's big idea was, let's go back. Let's go back to weird filters, weird effects, and let's go back to square photos. Because if you think about it, most of the photos that you would get from prints would be rectangular, wouldn't they? Or, or portrait what might have been a way to take square photos back in the day? Medium format camera. Medium format? And what about regular people that didn't have a medium format camera? That they could develop their photos in seconds? Polaroids. Oh, Remember Polaroids. Um, so Polaroids were little square photos and those were very prone to weird results. Yeah. So Instagram's big idea was like Polaroid for the next generation. It was very uh, similar. Uh, Hipstamatic, I don't think, uh, if I recall, they didn't... Did they have the social network? I don't think so. Well, kind of. Yeah, they had a little kind of like sharing with each other, but it didn't yeah, take it off. Like so it was both Hipstamatic and Instagram. They were kind of battling it out for a while, and Hipstamatic, I don't really yeah. think it's really around anymore. Yeah, so. For the next mm -hmm. generation. So I forget which one came out first, either Instagram yeah. or Hipstamatic. Yeah. But the, the idea with this network 
is uh, you take fun weird photos you make them square you upload them and then besides that it's the same thing comment on each other's photos like each other's photos follow accounts etc so that was that was the big innovation square photos fun filter now they don't have to be square anymore now you don't have to use the filter so it kind of lost a little bit of its character I think um, has anyone heard of Vine? So Vine, extinct video social network. Well, <laughs> YouTube is the big social network. Some people use uh, Vimeo. There's social networks of video. Vine was another, yet another video social network of sharing. Anyone know what its big innovation was? short clips six second video so if perfect for the short attention span culture we live in these were six second long videos and you might say I can't what am I gonna do in six seconds I'm barely turning on my camera and five seconds is up well I saw a lot of very creative videos a lot of fun interesting uh, memorable videos on, on vine in six seconds people were being so innovative that they made their video in such a way you know these videos would automatically loop and they would make them in a way that they would record something and they recorded it in such a way that if it looped it looked seamless like it was happening over and over and I liked Vine a lot and I had an account and I had I don't know how many tens of thousands of views and then the parent company shut it down just this year anyone know whose parent company that is Twitter so Twitter bought them a few years ago, and it was around, and it was fun, and I liked it, and uh, it was fun for companies and all of that, and then Twitter this year decided to refocus, and they shut it down. Uh, I think the website is still there, but it doesn't really work like it used to, and um, Vine is, is gone. Now I bring that up because for a while, Vine and Instagram were both uh, were both um, sort of uh, jockeying for a position to be the, the big company for short video. So it was, Vine was the first one, first short uh, video platform. Probably not really first, exactly first, but first uh, famous one. And then Instagram followed. I think it was barely like a week or two apart. Mm -hmm that Vine came out, six second videos, very interesting, how is it gonna change things? And then Instagram put out theirs and their innovation was 15 second videos. Uh, that you can add a weird filter to, yes. Is Stardust pretty much similar? Stardust? Stardust. Hmm, I, had, I don't, I'm not, maybe I hadn't heard of that one, I'll make a note of it, what, what, can, you, what can you tell me about it? Is it an app or a social network? It's, it's a thing it's like an app. People can view it to uh, media and stuff like that. Hmm. I'll look into it. Uh, I don't have much to say about it. I, I don't think I've heard it. Heard of it. It's just, I think it's just a hmm. So Instagram, uh, 15 second videos, and you can add the filter. So you have these black and white filters, you have these overexposed filters, you have just a way to make the photos a little different. And I liked, I like that, I like uh, putting these weird filters, making it interesting, because these cameras nowadays can take pretty good photos overall, and um, if I don't like it, I just delete it. But here I purposely uh, want to put an interesting filter, and the name Instagram uh, is related that it's instant that you take the photo, you put a quick filter on it, pretty much instantly. Um, Instagram nowadays. So all of that was mostly in the past. Square photos, filter, then short video, plus a filter. Nowadays, any size photo, filter not required. Uh, video length I think it's up to maybe two minutes we'll check we'll check it maybe up to one minute maybe up to two minutes it's still very short you're not gonna be able to upload you know a 
10 minute long opus. <coughs> Um, it's about two minutes, and then filter not required. Okay, here's another now an innovation that they have nowadays: stories. Well, if you use Snapchat, that's not an innovation because Snapchat did it first. Stories is basically collections of photos and videos. Like a board. Like a board, but one more thing, expires in 24 hours. So the big idea with Snapchat that we'll talk about later in, the, in another day of the class, Snapchat mm -hmm. is the social network where you share photos and video, etc., just like every other. But Snapchat's innovation is that your photos disappear in 24 hours. So you upload a photo to it and your friends have 24 hours to see it, and then it goes away. Well, that's great for, uh, for me so that mom doesn't see my embarrassing photos. And then all of the younger set flocked over to uh, Snapchat because, okay, first of all, my parents are not on Snapchat. They don't know what Snapchat is. Mm -hmm. And second, my embarrassing stuff is going to go away in 24 hours, supposedly. So uh, Instagram's amazing innovation recently was stories, mm -hmm. like Snapchat. So you can kind of put together things in a board, sort of, and then they expire in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Here's another mm -hmm. recent innovation from Instagram live video well you would turn on you, you will see you can turn on a button and then you your camera will turn on and all your friends and family and followers and uh, and customers or whatever would see what you're doing live on the on the camera well wait a minute that's not an innovation because a plenty of plenty of others also did that um, uh, periscope uh, even uh, Facebook Live and uh, YouTube Live and all of that. So again, this is another example where uh, maybe it's an innovation at one point, but then it gets copied by one network and another network, and now they've all got it. It's not really that innovative anymore, and it's just a numbers game about who has more users and such. So I started off with just photos. Now it's also photos and video and uh, stories and live video like every other network. You can go live on Instagram, you can go live on Facebook, you can make collections in, in Facebook, they, uh, in Twitter they call them moments. All of these networks are kind of bleeding into each other. And yet, we still have the challenge of, well, how do I get people to my networks? How do I get people to this network and to follow me on that one? That's the challenge that we've talked about someone's already happy enough on Twitter, how am I going to give bring them over to my Instagram? Someone's already happily using Instagram, how am I going to get them over to YouTube? So that's something to consider. For us then, what we have to do is uh, set up an account and start using it. I'll go over the, the anatomy of the Instagram interface show you how um, you share different content, show you how to get active and get views and all of that. Because Instagram, like every other network, I need to build followers. Uh, I, I don't get followers right away, perhaps. I need to have interaction first, and all of that that we've talked about before, and that we will reiterate. Question? So this cannibalization, um, is that why, did you say we went back at Vine, where it is no longer? I'm not exactly sure the reason be why it was shut down, but Twitter, perhaps, part of their reason was, part of their reasoning was, they financially they're not doing that well in in their stock price and such. It's very low, like in like at nine dollars a share or something, and at one point it was like at eighty. So they've lost a lot of value, and they're just trying to figure out what do we need to do to make the investors happy again. You know, when a company loses money, they restructure, meaning shut down stuff and fire people. So uh, probably uh, that was one of the big reasons. Because they had views, they had people, they had activity on Vine, but structurally and financially it didn't work out for them, so they shut it down, probably. And they could then focus on their core business of 140 characters, which is now 280 characters. Mm -hmm. They just uh, are changing. I don't know. If, I don't know if everyone has that feature yet, but everyone's going to get 280 characters. Great. So I hope not everyone gets 280 characters.
So what we'll do is we'll use Instagram here. I've got the app already installed. Um, you should have it installed. If you don't, you have to take a moment to install it. I'm going to launch it for the first time. So I'm on this screen about setting up an account. How many of you already have an Instagram account? A few people. OK. You can decide to use your account right now that exists, or you can create another account uh, for testing purposes. Uh, you will be able to manage and jump between different Instagram accounts in the app. You can jump from this one to that one. Uh, if, you've, if you're already logged in, however, I, I think you have to log out to create another account and then you'll be able to switch between them. If you don't know how to log out, don't worry about it just yet. Let me create an account here and then I'll get inside and then I'll show people what you do inside. So I see the screen first of all here. I'm, it's asking for either a phone number or an email for me to create an account. Uh, either one of those will work fine, but I'm going to put an email address. And um, last time I did this last semester, I tried to create, tried to create it with a fake account, and it let me create it and use it for like 10 minutes, and then it kept nagging me about go verify your account so much that then the, the app basically shuts down. Uh, so it really wants you to have a real email address here. Uh, so I'm going to put a fake one and then let's see eventually it'll kick me out and then I'll I'll get back to it with my real account. But I'm going to create a, a fake account here. I'll do Victor at VictorC.com Like every other social network, it's going to ask full name and then password and such. Full name, as we've seen in the other networks, is the one that is not unique, is the one that anyone can have. Mm -hmm. So I can create an account right now called Justin Bieber, which is, I think, the most popular Instagram account of all with like, I don't know, 50 million followers. So full name is not unique, but on a subsequent screen, I will choose the username, and the username is the one that is unique. So I'm making notes here. Instagram, most networks, has a full name, has a full name, not unique, a username is unique. Full name of your business. When people get to that screen they think, okay, well uh, I'm making a I'm making a business for uh, you know amazing pet ama amazing pet walkers. That's my business, let's say I'm a I'm a pet walker, dog walker. So okay I'm gonna make a business and I'm gonna put my name, Victor Campos. No, here it's asking you to put the name the full name of your business, not your full name. And so um, then username would be the name of the business also. So this is the full name of my business. I'll do Victor's Bakery. Put some sort of password. Next. So because I put in a, a, a full name based on the full name, it's suggesting a username. With over 500 million accounts, all, not all, but a lot of the good names perhaps have been taken. So if I really wanted Victor's Bakery, perhaps some other company already got Victor's Bakery because they have over half a billion users. So here it's recommending you might want Bakery Victors. No, that doesn't make sense. So I'm going to try to see if it does let me for Victors Bakery. It probably won't. But then it'll give me other suggestions. No spaces, no special characters. Victors Bakery is not available. So you'll have to settle 
this happens uh, a lot of times when you're creating an account on any of these social networks uh, Twitter's been around over 10 years and Facebook as well Instagram not as long I, I think it's about five years but with that popularity the, your perfect name might have been taken so you'll have to put Victor's Bakery number two or Victor's underscore bakery you, you can do underscores Underscore. Okay, it's going to let me do that one, Victor's underscore bakery. But I'm going to put numbers just uh, so that I don't take the real name for someone else. Now, I was, uh, let me pull out my hipster card. I was on Instagram on the first week of launch, and I've used Instagram for a while, and I really like it, and I don't like it as much anymore now that Facebook owns it, and they've changed a bunch of things about it. I remember for the first year and a half or so, Instagram was an independent company, and I saw it being interesting and innovative, and I really liked it, and I built a following and such, and then uh, Facebook bought them, and then there was a big... Uh, hashtag RIP Instagram that was going on because you know here's this big company when when Facebook uh, had you know 300 million users instead of the 2 billion that they have now we thought well this big parent company is gonna ruin them Facebook I don't like uh, I don't like Facebook and now Instagram is gonna get uh, uh, set up and messed up by Facebook but I kept the account and I've seen it evolving and they left it alone for a long time surprisingly Facebook left Instagram alone for a long time alone for a long time then in the last two years or less that's when I started to see the big changes much more integration of Instagram with Facebook for better and for worse I think for better for businesses and for worse for people so one of the things for worse for example here if you don't look carefully enough, you're going to click next, and you'd miss this and this. And what that's saying first is your contacts are periodically synced and stored on our servers. To remove contacts, go to settings and disconnect. Learn more. That doesn't sound good. And down here, prefer not to connect your contacts? Click this. That doesn't even look like a button. Yeah. So the default is you're giving Instagram, or AKA Facebook, the uh, the right uh, for them to check your contact list of your phone and then store it on their servers for your convenience is what the company line is um, so whatever you want to do here is up to you I'm going to click on continue without syncing if you did proceed and let it sync there will be a way to disconnect it in the settings so I'll make a note of that and we'll go back to settings a little later say without syncing I will click that one okay because it is connected with Facebook then it, it's going to recommend find Facebook friends to follow this is similar to the other networks where it comes up about are you going to connect with your friends and family and I have an argument about this with the other people in my own company because as I said I teach this but I'm also part of a web design slash marketing company and we argue about this. Is it valuable for a person to connect with their friends and family on these networks or not if, uh, regarding their business? I personally say, no, I don't think it's too valuable because if I'm Victor's Bakery and I'm connecting with my friends and family on all these networks about, hey, everyone, hey, John, hey, Jill, hey, Janet, please follow my Facebook page. Please follow my business. Please like my business. That's going to get annoying for my friends and family. Am I going to build my, my business on the backs of my friends and family? I personally, I, I don't think that's too valuable. The other people in, in my company, they say, it is valuable because then you can get connections of friends of friends. If I connect with Janet and she's got connections to seven other people, I might be able to connect with those seven other people and get more followers and more sales, etc. And I think both of those possibilities, both of those answers are good possibilities. I just, I personally, uh, I, I don't think 
connecting with friends and family is as valuable as, as one might think. So there is a skip button there if you'd like to not connect with Facebook. And you can connect after the fact as well. I'm gonna skip that. And then it's going to uh, nag me. Are you sure you don't yes, want to connect? Etc. Nope, skip it. Add profile photo. So here would be the photo of my, of my uh, business, my logo. So I need to have my logo on my phone in order to select it to then use it. Um, I think that is one of the things you can change on the website on a real web browser. But if I had a photo, I could import it from Facebook. So if I've got my Facebook set up, I can get my company photo from Facebook. Or I can take a photo of the company logo, or I can choose a photo from my library if I've got it on my device. I don't have a photo of my business at the moment, so I'm going to skip it. And then eventually I get to the Instagram home screen. So I'll pause right here. Does everyone either, if they're able to, are they logged in or have set up an account? Anyone having any trouble? All right, so let's look at a few things regarding settings that I would recommend. And we'll talk about how does it work and then how to get followers and all of that. Uh, let's look at settings first. On the bottom, you have the various rows of icons for the different screens, and then we have the little user icon, the account icon, this little person. You want to tap on, <coughs> tap on that. This shows information about my particular account. No followers, no posts, no logo, nothing. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Let's go to settings on the top right corner. Oh, it might be telling me here, uh, set up notifications. Um, again, I'll get back to some of this in a moment. But on this three dot menu, this, this is where your settings are at. If you tap that, you have options. So if you did want to connect with your Facebook friends, there's the spot to do it. If you wanted to open up your contacts of your device, you could do that there. And again, the purpose of that is if you allow Instagram to look through your contacts, it will tell you, Janet is also on Instagram. Why not connect with her? So that could be valuable for my business. It could be another follower, another potential customer, perhaps. But I personally, again, I don't think about uh, building my business on the backs of my friends and family. Further down, there's accounts, inf there's account items. Okay, so in the accounts section. People can uh, tag you in a photo, tag your business in a photo. That's valuable to help with that viral marketing. Uh, we'll go into details of it a little later, but uh, the idea is, uh, let's say I visit Victor's Bakery, I'm a customer. I take a photo of the food, I put it on Instagram, and I tag Victor's Bakery. That's a little bit of free publicity the customer tagged my business in their photo. So their friends and family would see the photo and say, oh, that looks really tasty. Who, who shot it? And then I'm tagged in the photo, so then they would be able to go to my account. And we'll see how that works a little later. But here I would see a screen where all of the photos where someone has tagged me or my business in the photo is visible. I can save photos like bookmarks to look at them again later and they're all listed here. Question. I'm having trouble getting any sort of internet on my phone. Is there a, I know there's a Wi-Fi here, is there a password I should use? Yes, the Wi-Fi password you. is CE Fall 2017. Thank you. So then anything that I've, it's all lowercase, yes. 
CE 2017. So if the if the photos that you come across you like, you can save them like bookmarks. Mm -hmm. That, I would say, is related to sort of a competitor analysis and reconnaissance. So let me make some notes here. Instagram settings screen, or options screen. Uh, we've got the photos of you. A list of photos your business has been tagged in. Related to viral marketing, see who shot it. So you can see who took the photo. You can then do what we talked about on previous weeks, about then following that account, interacting with that account, trying to build them <coughs> as a follower. So in the real world, uh, I, don't, I don't know who saw my commercial on TV. I don't know who read my flyer. Um, here, I can see those things, who, who liked my photo, who commented, and all of that. Next, we've got saved. So bookmarks, uh, photos, your account liked. Or stored. Use it for inspiration. Now, is it icon. available on the front end if you bookmark it? The yes, there's going to be another icon on a different screen. It looks like a little bookmark mm -hmm. icon, and you'll be able to see it in, in the front end as well, besides the options. No, I mean, when we're not logged in, can, like, um, when you go to my page, could you see my bookmark? Oh, um, hmm, good question. Some of these things are going to be public for everyone, and some things not. I have to double check when we get to that screen. Okay. Uh, I would, however, assume most of the things that you do, like saving stuff, will be public. It's just easier to assume it's going to be public, so therefore we'll operate in that way, thinking like, well, someone might see this. Someone might you know, see my online activity, so just think about it that way. So uh, saving these bookmarks... Um, for reconnaissance to see what the competition is doing, although again it will alert them that you've uh, saved and commented and all of that. Story settings, don't worry about it at the moment. Uh, edit profile, that's the same as that other screen, we'll do that in a moment. Change password is obvious. Two-factor authentication. Um, this is something that's m getting more and more important nowadays with so many of these online hacks, so many of the stolen information happening. Uh, how many of you have heard of two-factor authentication? Sometimes they call it two-step authentication. Two-factor authentication basically is that it's going to require two forms of identification. Right now, it only required my password. I had my username or my email and my password and it let me log in. Well, two-factor is then it would ask you for a second password in a, in a second format, often by sending you a text message with a random password that will only work for like 10 minutes. So a lot of sites have this nowadays because let's say someone figures out your password and you're using one password on all of your accounts, on your Twitter, on your Instagram, on your bank. Well, if they figured out your Twitter account password, they'll use that same password on all of your accounts, and you're very compromised. If you've got two-factor set up on these accounts, it'll say, okay, great, we recognize your usual password, now please supply your brand new random password. And if you've got that set up, it will uh, give you the, the other password randomly, and uh, it'll expire in 10 minutes, and it's much more secure. It is more hassle, however, and I believe I've said before that nowadays we have to juggle or we have to weigh uh, security versus convenience. Something that is very convenient is usually not as secure. And something that is secure is usually not convenient. This is not convenient. I have to put two passwords. Uh, and I have you know a few moments to do it in. And if I don't do it, then it, it starts over. That's not convenient. <coughs> well, convenient is one password. 
the convenient is one password on all 20 of my accounts. Sure. But that's not secure. So that's something for you to think about. Here is a list of all of the posts you've liked, and, the, and likes at least will be visible. I know those are visible. I don't recall if the ones that are saved are visible. But anytime you go to anyone's account and click like, people can see that. So this happens a lot of times, like, uh, who was it? Uh, Ted Cruz, that recently someone on his account liked something that he shouldn't have liked, <laughs> and the whole world saw it. Mm -hmm. So those are visible to people. You can block users. You can prevent people from seeing your content if they're abusive, if they're, I guess, a competitor, if you don't want them to see your stuff. That is not foolproof, however, because a person can log in with a different account and see your stuff. If it's public. If it's public. But most of the time, any of these social networks for businesses, they will be public because we want as many followers as possible. Uh, block users switch to business profile so when if you go through these steps you can look at this on your own but if you go through these steps this would uh, connect Facebook uh, much more together so that then from the Facebook side of things you can start boosting posts in Instagram it's kind of a long way around but because Facebook owns Instagram you can boost a post in Facebook and also boost it in Instagram at least for free what you pay it's free on Instagram but you're paying for it in Facebook so when you pay in Facebook you know that those five dollars to boost your your content on Facebook Facebook can then optionally also send it to Instagram and so you get sort of like two places where your ad your promotion is running for the one price you can have it on both needs setup so go through the switch to business profile link in the settings here in the options yes so I know you had mentioned a few weeks back how Facebook wants you to set up your their account or the account for them but if you want to have both of these would it be wiser from your perspective just to isolate the personal world and completely create an uh, Instagram account that is connected to Facebook because you know they do can obviously they can connect the dots um, just from a from again a smarter approach to business, you know, small business, and personal. I can say personally what I do and the other people in my business because we, we do it in the real world, and then you can see if that works for you. I have um, my uh, own personal Instagram that I set up with my own personal email, and I, and I don't have it connected with any other Facebook accounts. Then we've got um, the the um, Instagram account created for clients which is then connected to the Facebook account so that it can send the content from Facebook to Instagram so I think it would be better to separate those things have your personal Instagram with its own email and then have the business one with its own and it might be a little tricky to set that up depending if you've got one email address and personal and it's set to Facebook well, if you try to use that same email address to then create it on Instagram, there might be some weird connection because then you need a separate email address for the business Instagram, but you want to connect that back to the Facebook account and it yeah, might no, be so a little messy. Separate email, separate Instagram. Okay. Separate yeah. Facebook, like emails, business, Instagram, business, Facebook, business. Then I can connect all three. Yeah. Like exactly. Isolated. Exactly. Well, that one email address is the key. So if it's the business email address, that's the key to then have the Facebook business and the Instagram business accounts. So here's the button that says private account. If you turn this on, uh, no one will see your stuff unless you allow them. I don't recommend it for a business because we want to get as many followers and customers as possible. You could have 
use case scenarios where you have private accounts because then you could give VIP access to certain followers. But really, I think uh, for most businesses, you want it public. There's a bunch more settings over here. Let's see. Um, linked accounts. Let's see. Some of these. OK. So on linked accounts, you can actually connect your Instagram with these other rival social networks and post something on Instagram and it'll go over to the other networks too. Uh, so here they are these ones. Now this your mileage may vary because it works great if you post to Instagram it goes over to Facebook obviously same company. Twitter is not that great. A few years ago before Facebook bought them you could post something on Instagram and it would get sent over to Twitter really well. It would have the text that you wrote and the picture. That's what I would expect. Nowadays, when you share from Instagram over to Twitter, it just basically sends the text but not the picture. The text and the link to the picture. So the person still has to click the link to go back to Instagram to view the picture. Tumblr, uh, I don't think most people would be interested in that. And then Amoeba, I've never heard of it. And OK.RU, um, I don't quite know that one either. So you can connect to those two networks you don't know about. So all of that's optional, but you can uh, connect to these other networks. There's a spot for contacts. So if you'd like to connect contacts, you can go there. If you want to change the language of Instagram, you can go to language. You have push notifications and also the email notifications. Uh, what I would say here, you should look at these on your own. They're rather self-explanatory. But if you go first to push notifications, it says here, most of these are turned on, meaning let me know <coughs> when someone likes my photo, do a little pop-up on my phone that says someone liked your photo. John Smith liked your photo. And it says anyone at all can like your photo, or it'll alert to you that anyone liked your photo. Well, when you're big and you're a big celebrity and you know you have millions of followers, what they do is they change it to this one people I follow. They don't get the alerts from every single person that follows them. They only get the alerts of where they have a mutual connection. And that would be the people I follow. Most of us will probably want this from everyone as we start off because I don't have uh, uh, 10,000 followers. I don't have 1,000 followers. I don't have 100 followers. So I would want from everyone that is uh, liking my content, I would want to be alerted of that for further, uh, you know, marketing purposes and trying to get followers and all of that. So again, all of these, look at them on your own. They should all make sense. Who can, what kind of alerts you get, and from who, and all of that. The defaults are probably fine, and there's a lot of little things to look at. Can I go back? If I look at email notifications, this is one definitely I really recommend. We'll take a break in a little bit, but I definitely recommend you go into the email notifications and look at that very carefully and probably turn them all off. I already get plenty of emails, and now I'm going to get emails from Instagram reminding me, oh, you haven't logged in recently. Why not check this out? Here's some new products and tools you might be interested in. Uh, here's some emails regarding feedback that you might want to give us. So probably you want to turn all of those off in the email and notifications screen. When it's off, when it's gray, is that off? Or is it yes. It's on when it's blue, when it's moved to the right, and then it's off gray to the left. Cellular data use. If you're on a, uh, a plan from your phone company that, that has a limitation, you know, you might have two gigabytes per month or seven or whatever, um, there is this cellular data use option that you can change. Um, this 
is on default and you can ch put it on less data and it says your experience may be uh, different so your videos may be slower and all of that uh, you, I don't think Instagram uses so much of your data that that's really a concern uh, I don't really see anyone here that is a 16 year old girl that is on Instagram all day long so I think you'll be fine uh, so you can change that if you want and uh, what else upload quality the default I would say keep the quality because it used to be you took the photo it showed up on the device and I can't I can't read it I can't see it and and that's it but nowadays you can actually zoom in you can zoom into the photos to see more detail so if you leave the upload quality to the regular setting a person will be able to zoom in and see more if you don't put that one your photo will be lower quality save original photos and save video so when you take the photo on Instagram it's gonna go to your Instagram account in the cloud and if you turn off that option you won't have a copy of it on your own phone you'd have to re-download it leaving it on puts a copy in your account online and a copy on your phone so that then you can do something else with it and same with video There's a section for getting help under support, a section about, and at the very bottom here, there is clear search history, add another account and log out. So if you already had an account on Instagram, I, I didn't remember exactly where this was at, but here it is. So if you already have an account on Instagram, you can go in and add a new account, and then you'll have the option to switch between the accounts in the app. So this is the best option. Yes, so that way you can use the same app uh, to manage more than one account. Um, I haven't added one very recently to see how the process has changed, if you need a different email account or if it will be attached to your current account. Uh, I believe it, it will be linked to a different email address, so you need a different email for this different account. Good question. Yes. Is there a reason why mine would not have the video, um, save. save the video? It just has the picture option to save the um, original photos, not save video. Is it because maybe I don't have any video on here? No. Um, um, version, perhaps? Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, sometimes there are different screens for different devices. Right. Uh, the screen looks slightly different on iPhone versus Android. Uh, you, yeah. you have an iPhone. I have an Android here. So if people, if yours looks very different than mine, everyone let me know. But um, I'm not exactly sure why you don't see save video. Yeah. Um, maybe because you don't have video, but I don't think that's it. And I wouldn't worry about it just yet. I'm using an Android on at the moment. Uh, I have my iPhone at home, but this one's a uh, this is Android, so it might be a little different from everyone. Because you're you're an account, a brand new account, so you don't have anything. Yeah, yeah really that is true. I don't have anything on the account either, so it still gives me the option. Yeah, just updating, so let's see if that makes a difference. Mm, that's true. Maybe you have a slightly older version of the app, and it doesn't have that option. Well, those are the various options. I'm going to go back and let's pause here for our first break. Uh, when we come back, we'll, we'll talk about your actual profile, these various other screens, and then actually using it and trying to get followers and all of that. Yeah. It's 10.36. We'll take a break until 10.46, and then we'll go on.